you grew up in Oklahoma, Tim. Yeah. Right? Now, that begs the question, <coughs> how much of this film is autobiographical? You know, it's in, in a sense, it's all autobiographical. I'm, I don't grow hydroponic pot, and I'm not a classics professor. Uh, but I have uh, abiding interests in both, um, and uh, and and more importantly, I'm uh, interested in achieving a healthy balance in my life between uh, the polar opposites that exist within us all, the our inclinations toward order and inclinations toward disorder are desire to structure our lives, but also have them be unpredictable. Um, and so I guess that I took my own biography as a guy who grew up in Oklahoma and then went east for college and studied classics to examine something I think we all have in common, uh, which is you know the, the various selves within each of us. All right, well now Thomas Wolfe says you can never go home right. again, but, but your movie is sort of sounding to me like saying you can't ever really leave home. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Uh, but then home is a metaphor in a, in a certain sense for self. Uh, you know, you can't, you can't remove yourself from yourself. And I think what Bill learns when he goes home and, and, and re-encounters his mother and, and his identical twin and where he was raised, uh, I, I think he learns how dangerous it's been uh, to distance himself from what was uh, not only happiest uh, in, in, in his life, which he articulates in, in a eulogy to his twin brother. Now, did you two gentlemen meet on the set of The Incredible Hulk? Is that where you... No, that, that in fact, we got to know each other because Tim, Tim's written a couple of things and I read them. We just met in New York. Mm -hmm. We got talking about this actually a few months before I started writing the script of The Incredible Hulk. And, and in the course of doing that, I went to Louis Leterrier and said, I think you should beat Tim about playing uh, uh, that role in The Hulk. So it, it actually, it was the flip. The Hulk more grew out of this. Right. Now, Edward, you play two brothers who are, are really quite different um, at the time we meet, or maybe they started out the same, but um, which one of those two brothers was it easier for you to relate to, and, and which one did you have to study up on to play the part? For Brady was a pro more of a project, you know, I mean, he's, not not just because of the accent, and and that was fun, but, the, but because, um, there's hidden depth to Brady. There, there, with Brady, there's a presentation that's different from the, the the substance of his mind and everything. And so, it's just there's a, a little bit more of a dense, yeah, a dense tapestry there. You did a great job making the two guys look uh, different, just from mannerisms as well as appearance. But um, briefly, for layman's terms, how do you do? being on the screen, it's two people at the same time. Well, there's, there's, you know, uh, without taking all the magic out, I mean, some of it is just actually magic. I'm able to do, like, things that no one else can do. No, the, uh, there's, there's, there, what I like about it, actually, is that there's the high and the low, um, phi. You know what I mean? There's, there's some stuff that's almost comically low phi, in the sense that you, with the camera cut, the, all the old traditional things, the the seamlessness of the camera cut and sort of the sleight of hand of it, the the, the you know the, the appearance of things being being seamlessly in the same space that aren't, and 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 in the limited ways that we used more high tech ways of doing it, um, you know, it's it's uh, I think we had the benefit of maybe the next generation up from what even other twins movies have been able to use in terms of um, not being confined just to the static shot but being able to do tw twins inhabiting the same shot in a, in moving camera shots now which is which is an evolution up even from I think where they were when they did adaptation and things like that. There's some poetry recited by Carrie Russell's character Janet in the, in the movie and you know, you've got the Leaves of Grass, the Walt Whitman reference, and she recites a lot of that, 
But then she recites something totally original, which is very, um, you know, interesting lines. Did you write that? Part? I did, yeah. Is there more to that? Uh, is there a complete poem? No, that's that's the complete poem. That's it. Yeah, my actually my my original training as a writer was uh, in poetry. Um, I spent three years at the at uh, Quartz Mountain Arts Camp uh, as a writer when I was in high school up in Lone Wolf, Oklahoma, and that was back during the oil boom in the late '70s and early '80s. And this extraordinary arts camp had the resources to bring in really great poets uh, for these young high school writers. And so when I was in high school, I studied with William Pitt Rood and Siv Cedring Fox and William Stafford, some really great American poets. Uh, and then I went on to write other stuff. And they, they only wanted you to write about oil. That was the only <laughs> right. Yeah, you had that. <laughs> All, only poems about oil. <laughs> Now you got Susan Sarandon and Richard Dreyfuss in the film, which is really great. Um, was that a struggle? Uh, were they easy to get on board? Uh, no, I mean, they loved the script. Uh, but also I had Edward, and actors want to work with other extraordinary actors. Uh, and so going out with, with Edward attached to this material made it astonishingly easy. Um, you know, Susan basically read it, and during uh, the first five minutes of sitting down to lunch with her, she was wanted to play the the mother of the twins. Uh, and similarly with with Carrie Russell and Richard Dreyfus, which of course is what movies are all about. You know, you write write a script, but it takes actors to come in and really leaven the material, and that's what all these guys did. Did you hire a, um, you know, a pie growing expert uh, for that? Well, we, uh, you know, there was a tremendous amount of research that went in, not only um, on my part, but also our wonderful production designer, this guy named Max Bisco, who's a very close friend of mine. Um, uh, yeah, we, we put a great deal into our research. Uh, and, you know, it, 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 was, it was essential not just for Susan Sarandon's, uh, Susan Sarandon's character to say to Brady, you have a higher IQ than your, your brother, but really to, to indicate that on the screen. And so what we call in the movie the, the Taj Mahal of hydroponics uh, was, a, was a hard fought uh, design. Who did all the special effects? Was that somebody that you've worked with before? Uh, uh, no, actually, uh, you know, again, you, you, you meet people and interview people. We, we were constrained by, uh, by um, the fact that we were a low-budget movie and we were shooting on location in Louisiana, so we couldn't afford to fly people in, so it was a local uh, effects crew. Uh, and then um, we used, a, a, if you can believe it, a digital effects house in Bulgaria, of all wow. places. So our crossbow is really big in Oklahoma. I just want to know. Yeah, and don't you dare say they aren't big in Texas. Because yeah. I have been to the Bass Pro Shop. I've been to the Bass Pro Shop <laughs> down here too. Okay. It's an entire wing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Crossbows, as as we say in you the know, movie, tree blinds, inexplicably all that popular in yeah. Oklahoma. Great. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, speaking with us. And will you be working together again on a project? Do you I'm think? sure we will. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Nothing, nothing works.